Hi, my name's Justine Gale and I'm joining you today to talk about health and safety. For most of us, it's not always the first thing we think about when going about our day-to-day -day work. We're made aware of health and safety regulations and obligations on induction, but more often than not, that's just about as much consideration as it gets. In this series of programmes, we're going to be looking at health and safety in the workplace as it affects all Superdrug and Savers team members. We'll be looking at health and safety legislation, company policy and the responsibility of the employer, the staff and how we do things in Superdrug and Savers. So now let's talk to the guys who have overall responsibility for the management of health and safety. Nigel, you're the Director for Health and Safety. Tell us why, for you and the other directors in the group, safety and welfare are so important within the business. It's absolutely critical. And how can everybody contribute towards health and safety within the company? It's quite easy. Great, thanks Nigel. Now, Daryl, you're the Head of Health and Safety. Who has ultimate responsibility for health and safety within the business? The ultimate responsibility lies with the board of directors as they lead the health and safety agenda. Most of your working day is probably spent at your workstation, hence the need to make sure you are comfortable and at ease in your surroundings. Adjusting your chair and your monitor to the right height and having your keyboard in the right position and your work tools all within easy reach all contribute to maintaining a safe and healthy working situation. The correct posture or working position will help avoid those minor but niggling conditions associated with desk-bound work. The display screen equipment assessment can be found on the intranet. Go to Favourites and click on the DSE assessment and follow the instructions. Completing this is for your own benefit. The DSE assessment is interactive and will give you guidance on how to set up your workstation. If you experience eyesight problems or headaches whilst operating the equipment, you should also contact the Health and Safety Department. They'll give you a voucher to take to our preferred optician, asking them to check your eyes for work with display screen equipment. Any issues identified will be flagged with the appropriate department automatically. When it comes to a really serious emergency such as a fire, it's essential that everyone knows what to do. Fire emergency instructions are posted on every floor in every office next to the fire alarm call points which are clearly visible. It's your responsibility to read and understand what you have to do and where to go in a fire emergency. Get to know them now. If you don't, and the worst happens, you'll be putting the lives of others at risk as well as your own. And get to know your appointed fire marshal. Penny Neal, you're Hi. a fire marshal. Yes. Um, if staff discover a fire, what should they do? Can they get a fire extinguisher and try to put it out? No, even though all our fire marshals are fully trained in the use of fire extinguishers and fire equipment, they're also trained in how to evacuate a building smoothly and as safely as possible. Okay, so what responsibility do staff themselves have? They need to, all staff, they need to make sure that they're aware of their fire exits, their call points, the evacuation procedure and the muster points. Okay, so if you're the one to discover a fire, what sort of procedure should you follow? They need to raise the alarm immediately. You shout fire, 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 mm -hmm. and then you need to break the glass or push the button of the nearest red break call point and then make your way out to the nearest exit. When evacuating from the upper floors, always use the stairs and hold on to the handrail whenever possible and never use the lifts in the event of a fire evacuation. Okay, so once staff are out of the building, where do they go? I'll show you. Thanks. You should also get to know where our first aid room is, also known as our wellbeing clinic, located in our deli. The first aid book is also kept here. Claire, you're a first aider. What should staff do if they or a colleague have an accident and can't quickly find a first aider? It is often the case that a first aider isn't sat at their desk. All offices have an accident report book and if preventative measures are to be introduced, every incident must be logged and if necessary, will be thoroughly investigated by the Health and Safety Department. 
any sudden illness or accident at work, however minor, resulting from a slip, trip, fall or anything else for that matter, must be reported. Slippery, greasy or wet floors are the most common cause and if they go unreported they can cause a very nasty accident. So if you see any relatively harmless liquid around on the floor, take ownership of it and make sure it's cleaned up, either by yourself or one of the in-house cleaners. Trips tend to occur through objects left lying about. For your own safety and that of others, make sure that all corridors, fire exits and walkways are left clear of any objects that could cause a trip or fall. To make your life easier and safer in retrieving those day-to-day -day files, hop-ups are provided. Most good housekeeping in and around the workplace is really just a matter of tidiness and common sense. For example, if you're making a cup of tea or coffee, use a sealed mug or use one of the paper cups with the lids provided to prevent spills and to keep the floor clean. Although the company is responsible for the condition and upkeep of our offices, we all have a role to play in maintaining a safe, clean and healthy working environment.